So right now, all eyes are on Ukraine and the Russian invasion that started a couple weeks ago. Military analysts and historians especially are watching this conflict carefully. Not only is this the first major war between conventional armies in decades, it is also an indicator of how well Russian forces fare against a military of comparable strength. So far, the answer is not well. While Russian forces are gaining territory, they are doing so at a slow pace and facing significant losses. Armored vehicles are getting destroyed by the hundreds, helicopters and planes are being shot down constantly, and their advances are getting bogged down by stiff Ukrainian resistance and brutal urban warfare. Though Ukraine may still be defeated through sheer numbers and attrition, this invasion will at best end in a Pyrrhic victory for Russia. Now, there are a lot of reasons for Russia's failures. Shoddy military equipment, outdated tactics, supply lines being cut, and constant harassment by anti-tank weaponry all contribute. However, one of the biggest issues has been air superiority. At the time of recording, Russia has lost somewhere above 60 helicopters and planes, and undoubtedly more have otherwise failed to achieve their objectives. While this is in part due to the skilled pilots at Ukraine's disposal, such as the supposed ghosts of Kiev, there is another big factor at play, SEED, and Russia's initial failure to do it. For those of you unfamiliar with the term, SEED refers to suppression of enemy air defenses. These are operations intended to destroy or disrupt an enemy's anti-air weapons, clearing the way for vulnerable air forces like attackers or helicopters to move in. SEED operations use a variety of weapons like anti-radar missiles, cluster munitions, artillery strikes, and electronic warfare, and an effective SEED campaign at the beginning of an operation can allow an air force to operate with impunity against enemy forces. Russia's SEED campaign was not. For starters, it has been known for some time that Russia is significantly behind the West in its capabilities. Anti-radar missiles appear to be in short supply, and they don't really have a lot of dedicated aircraft for this role. Their initial strikes and missile launches also appear to have been acting on a lot of guesswork and bad intel. Even now, some of Ukraine's network is still running, and when you add manpads into the mix, it makes sense why Russia has been hesitant to deploy its air forces so far. Since there are many YouTubers more qualified than me to detail the specifics from a military perspective, I'm going to instead cover how the lessons from this debacle can be applied to science fiction. In this video, I'll be covering why SEED matters and how it works. It is something that can clearly play a major role in an invasion so it is something that no real or fictional military can afford to neglect. During any ground battle, an effective army constantly needs air support. However, these bombers and attackers are often extremely vulnerable to anti-air weapons. Things like missile platforms, self-propelled anti-air, man-portable rocket launchers, and machine guns can all pose a threat to these planes, and even flying tanks like the A-10 Warthog can only survive one or two missiles before going down. Even when they don't shoot down a plane, AA can force it to abort its mission and retreat. Not only do air defenses make it difficult to use one's own bombers, it also makes interception harder as well. A fighter pilot's job can already be hard enough when trying to shoot down an enemy plane, and AA only makes it worse. As we've seen in Ukraine, it's allowed quite a few Ukrainian aircraft to slip through Russia's defenses and attack vulnerable tank columns, slowing down Russia's advance even more. So now that we know why SEED is so important, how does it work? While suppressing air defenses can be done through a variety of methods, such as artillery or sabotage. However, it is most commonly done by specialized aircraft like the Growler or Tornado ECR. These aircraft will primarily use anti-radar missiles, weapons designed to detect the radar of AA systems like the Patriot or Tunguska and hone in on them. Although they can be defended against by turning off the radar, Making the enemy turn off their radar basically does the job anyway. 
Another tactic used by SEED aircraft is to deploy decoy drones. These drones will trick AA systems into turning on their radars and firing at them, which gives the SEED aircraft a precise location to target. In the mass assault, such as in Desert Storm or a theoretical nuclear war, these drones can also be used to draw fire away from real aircraft. Finally, SEED aircraft also usually double as electronic warfare planes. The effectiveness depends on what they are up against, but these attacks can interfere with some anti-air systems. For how important it is, it is surprising how rare SEED operations are in science fiction. The only examples I can think of off the top of my head is a very brief scene involving Y-Wings in the Clone Wars, a couple of Halo missions, and a night mission in Project Wingman. Aside from that, they are virtually absent. Even most RTS games don't give you a lot of options besides zerg rushing the air defenses or just not building air units. One creative method of seed that I can think of comes from the Corsair in StarCraft 1. For those of you unfamiliar with the game, the Corsair had an ability called Disruption Web, which effectively blinds anything within its radius. It is commonly used against anti-air towers like the Missile Turret or Spore Colony in preparation for carriers or dropships. I think that Seed would realistically be fairly common in any sci-fi involving planetary invasions. How many times have we seen in movies and games where the heroes get into dropships and soar through thick black to reach a landing site, with the planes being shot down all around them? In a situation like that, I think deploying sea aircraft would make a lot of sense, and given how many dropships regularly get shot down, I think it'd be a worthwhile investment. It could also be used to create interesting storytelling opportunities. Perhaps a routine landing in your book goes wrong because someone screws up the seed operation. Or maybe your video game has a mission where you need to destroy radar stations before a major attack. The point is that if you want to write well thought out sci-fi militaries, you should try not to neglect this essential component of combined arms warfare. Though it won't make or break your world building, this kind of attention to detail can make it feel that much more grounded and help set it apart to audiences. It also opens up a lot of possibilities for unique details and moments that sci-fi hasn't explored much before. Anyway, if you found this video interesting, make sure to hit like and subscribe so I can continue to make useful and informative content. In the meantime, however, I will see you all starside.